Because of AI, anyone can now get started with filmmaking. But with so many tools available, endless different prompting techniques, and an overflow of information online, most people quit before they even get started. Fortunately, it doesn't have to be this way, because in this video, I will teach you exactly what you need to know to get started with AI filmmaking as a complete beginner. And to show you what's possible, I made this short movie trailer. Everything you've just seen from the story, the visuals to even the music, everything was all generated using AI. And the best part is this only took me an hour to make. But here's the thing, if you're watching this, you will probably not get these results because most beginners make these two mistakes. First, they pick the wrong tools. They just pick one tool, generate everything with that and they expect to have some good results. Second, you're still prompting like a child. There's no structure, no consistency and there's no vision behind it. By the end of this video you know exactly how you can prompt and how to make good prompts. By following these eight steps that I'm about to show you, you can get started with making your first AI movie. Now before I even get started with the steps, your first challenge is picking the right tool because each tool has their own advantage. Google VO3 for example is best for realism and it has crazy audio lip sync that no other tool has. If you want to have multi-camera angles with some dynamic movement, then you want to use C-Dance. But if you want to have cheap but very good image to video generations, then you want to use Kling or Halo AI. Now these are already three different tools, but same goes for the image generators. Most people just use ChatGPT, but you could also use something like Midjourney, although that is quite difficult to use. You'll also have the option to use Flux Context or Flux Dev. You see, all of these tools matter because with these tools you will get a different result. Personally, I would like to have access to the most amount of tools that are possible, but having multiple subscriptions can be quite expensive. That's why I use a tool called OpenArt. This tool has all of the different AI image generator built in one place and it has most of the AI video generators that I use also built into one place. This just allows me to have one subscription where I have access to multiple tools without paying like insane amount of money to run like six different subscriptions. It doesn't mean that you have to use this tool. If you use another AI video generator or another AI image generator, go ahead, this video still works for you. So I use this prompt structure, which is help me write a six to eight scene outline for a short AI generated movie. Now, here's what I want. You include your genre, your tone, your target length, your output format, and your constraints. Once you fill in all of this information, you yourself have a good idea of what you want to generate. And the AI also has a bit of context about what you want to make. Now, if you already have information, then you can just add that underneath there. So I have my prompt right here. I have filled in all of these data. So I have the genre romantic drama. I want to have a scene that's 30 seconds to 50 seconds long. I only want to have one character in there because it's the most easiest to do when it comes to AI characters. But keep in mind with AI movies, you can also have multiple characters. It's definitely possible. And then I already have some information about what I had in mind. So I already wrote out a few scenes. What I do next is I just copy this prompt. I go into ChatGPT and then I just send it. So now what ChatGPT does is it further enhances my story. And with this, I can just basically go back and forth with ChatGPT, discussing if I like it, if I don't like it, if I want something changed. You know the drill, like this is how ChatGPT works. So basically, once you have done this step, you're ready to move over to the next step, which is creating your main character. Now, in order to create our character, we wanna go over to OpenArt, we wanna click on generate image. And inside of here, we wanna select the model that we will be using. Now you have the choice of choosing between all of the different models out there, for example, ChatGPT, Google Image Jam 4, Flux Dev, Flux Context. You have all of these different options available. I'll be using Flux Dev. Then what we want to do is we want to get a prompt for Flux Dev. So for this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into ChatGPT and I'm just going to say, I'll be using Flux Dev to create my character. Can you give me the best image prompt that describes the women in the story? 
then you will be getting your prompt and you can just copy this prompt and put it inside of FluxDev. Now, because I already generated this story, I had a slightly different prompt, but I generated it using the exact same method. So I'll be using that prompt. Now we enter in our prompt and then for the settings, we wanna change the prompt adherence to two. And for the output, depending on what type of movie you wanna make, I wanna make a horizontal YouTube video. So I'm gonna do cinema 16 by nine. Then you're gonna hit create. And if you want to have more outcomes, then you just up or increase this number of images. Now that gives you two different outcomes. For example, this one and this one. Then you choose the one that you like the most and you're gonna hit upscale. So we're gonna get upscale and then you do two X or you do four X. So this will give you a better quality image. Once you have upscaled your image, you wanna download this as a JPEG. And now we can use this inside of Flux context. And that brings us over to step number three, creating variations of our character. Now this is very important because if you don't do this, then you cannot train the AI to have multiple different variations, multiple different angles of your character. And in most stories, you will need to have different angles. So what we want to do here is we want to switch the model. Then we're going to go over to Flux Context Pro. Here we want to go over to the Omni reference. And basically Flux Context allows you to do some image editing. Now what you can do is you can simply just prompt it to have a side angle of this character. So to give you an idea of what to prompt here, I have this prompt right here. A realistic full body side profile of the same girl standing still in the soft morning light in a quiet urban street. Maintain, this is very important, maintain exact hair, facial structure, outfit and overall appearance. Unless you want her to change in terms of her outfit or in terms of her facial features, then you can instruct it so. But otherwise, instruct it to maintain that same consistency. Then you can just hit generate. And just for the sake of time, I will just show you some examples that I made from this. So here I have one side angle, here I have another side angle. Then here I changed up the prompt a little bit of the back view of the same girl, maintaining the same exact hairstyle, facial things. And I just did that over and over again until I had like 20 different results. For example, here I have a slightly over the top angle. Then I have an angle of her sitting on the ground. You can do as many different variations as you want. I, in my case, did like 20 different variations. In case you want to have different outfits, you can also do that. But once you're ready with all the different variations that you have, then you're ready to move over to the next step, which is creating your consistent character. For this, you want to go back to the home page, then you click on characters. Here you can create your character. You can do this with multiple different methods, but the best method is starting with four plus images because the more references you give it, the better the outcome will be. So what you want to do is you want to add in all of the different images that you have. So I have like all the different images selected right here. You drag them over in here and now it's going to upload those. Then you give your character a name. So I'm just going to go with Minji2 as I already generated this character and then you click on create character. Now this will take you around 10 minutes and then you have something like this in your database. Now we can click on create with that character and here we can click on prompt and reference. Now that brings us over to step number five, creating your first scene with your character and image to video. So what you wanna do is you wanna create the first scene. For this, I'll be using ChatGPT to help me with that. Now I'm just gonna copy my prompt and I will give you my prompt in a second, which is for scene one, I need to generate the first frame of the scene. Can you give me an image prompt starting with, and then you put in your character name. So for me, my character name is Minji. Now what this will do is it will generate the prompt for us. It doesn't mean that you have to use this exact prompting format, but this will help you getting started with building all your prompts and also understanding how to prompt. Especially if you're a beginner, if you just say like Minji is sitting in a train, then it doesn't give you a consistent result. So now we have this first result. I'm just gonna copy this and we're gonna put this inside of OpenArt. As you can see, our character is selected, which is Minji. Then we're gonna paste this. We're gonna replace the name here as we already have her selected right there. And then we have our first prompt. For the auto enhance, I would leave that off because otherwise it will come up with some different things that you don't want to have in there. And then for the prompt adherence, you can play around with it. The sweet spot, in my opinion, is between two and three. That's kind of like the sweet spot there because the lower you put it, the less it will follow the prompt. The higher you put it, the more it will follow the prompt. You can also play around with the character weight to preserve her look. I'm just going to keep it at 0.8 as in my opinion and testing this worked the best. For the output settings, you want to change up between like cinema 16 by nine and then you hit 
hit create. Now you have the first scene of your video. In case you don't like this, you can generate it again and you will get a different version. Sometimes you might have to generate it a few times to get the best result, or you might want to switch up your prompt slightly. Luckily, this part is the cheapest part because you're still making the images. Take advantage of this. Don't settle for a mediocre image because then your video will turn out bad. Now, image to video is what we will be using later. So the images are the most important part. So what we're gonna do here, this is the actual first first image that I generated for this video is we're gonna click on use image and then go to image to video. This will bring us over to the video tab and here we can choose between all of these different models. Now the question is, which model should you use? Like I explained in the beginning, some models are better than others. For example, if you want to have some realism and some cinematic look to it, you might want to do C-Dance. If you want to have cheaper generations, then Kling 2.1 might be your best guess. Or Halu O2, I tested it out, it's pretty good for image to video. So you want to switch a bit between these three primarily. You also want to test out VO3 and that one is perfect for if you want to add audio to it. Now in this case, I'm just going to use C-Dance and here, I you can see I have my start frame right here. Now for the prompt, you don't actually have to write this yourself if you don't know how to prompt because we can use ChatGPT for this. So what we will be doing is we download this image, then we just put it inside of ChatGPT and then we just ask it to give me a CDN style image to video prompt based on this image. If you have specific things that you wanna include there, you, this is the time where you wanna mention this to ChatGPT. So now you wanna copy this prompt. You might wanna adjust it slightly and then we use this for video then for the quality settings you always want to use the high settings i'm going to use pro then the duration five seconds if you want to have more room for more things that are going on in scene then you want to switch over to 10 seconds you also want to choose 1080p because that gives you the highest settings and then you click on create this will give you a video like this example and then you're ready for step number six, which is repeating everything and doing it for every scene. So I already went ahead and did that for you. Uh, I have my different videos right here. I have all of the different generations. Here you can see this video. And now you wanna download all of these videos and bring them over to your editor, which is step number seven, editing. You can choose any editor that you'd like. For me, I have Premiere Pro, but you can use CapCut. You can use any type of free editor. It doesn't really matter as long as you have a timeline where you can put them in there and you can add in some music and maybe some sound effects. So I have my videos downloaded right here. All I have to do is I just have to select them, drop them into the timeline, and now I just have to arrange them so it makes sense. They're all arranged now and now you can make a few changes by tweaking them and making them a bit shorter, adding in a few like small transitions and then after you're done, you can add in the audio. So now you're ready for step number eight, which is adding in some music and optionally some sound effects. For this, you can use Epidemic Sounds or you can also use AI. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Suno for this. So I'm gonna click on create and here I can enter in my prompt. My prompt will be something about like some piano music. You can literally ask chat what some good background music is if you have no idea. Now, then you click on create and here it will give you a few different versions. I already created this one. And this might be some perfect music that you can use copyright free if you have a subscription inside of your video. So then you click on download and now we have the mp3 audio. Lastly, you wanna add in that audio onto your timeline and you wanna make it match. So you wanna cut this a little bit and then you have your video completed. So basically that's how you can get started with AI filmmaking in a nutshell. It's pretty straightforward, pretty easy, and you can go as much in depth as you'd like. This is just a beginner tutorial, but if you want a more advanced, let me know. Now, in terms of the tools that I'm using, let me give you an idea of how much it is if you wanna go with OpenArt. So they have the essential plan, which in my opinion is not enough if you are wanna get into AI filmmaking. Because with OpenArt, you can create your own 
own custom character and that will require you to do some training now this will cost you already like a thousand credits so you might not have enough if you use the four thousand credits a month in my opinion the best plan would be to go with the advanced or the infinite plan and that will give you plenty of credits to create all of the movies scenes and all of the images that you have in mind i will leave a discount code of 20 percent if you're going with a monthly plan and otherwise if you're going with an annual plan you will get like 50 percent without using my code they are winning this promotion already which is quite crazy so if you want to use open art then go ahead please use my link i appreciate that very much other than that if you want to have a bit more of a comparison between c dance halo vo3 then check out the video that's on the screen right now where i will compare all of these different tools and i will tell you which one is the best